The Coindesk Spotlight is brought to you by Nexo, the place to earn on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and more. All right, our Spotlight guest recently raised $28 million from Mark Andreessen, Coinbase, and others to increase privacy on blockchains using cutting-edge technology known as zero-knowledge proofs. Please join us in welcoming Alio CEO, Howard Wu. Welcome, Howard. Hi, thanks for having me on. Yes, Alio, rather. All right, so in the digital economy, not only can our information be tracked, but also our financial transactions. So if someone knows your Bitcoin wallet address, they can track all your transactions. So what is Alio building to better preserve our privacy, and why is that important? Yeah, so at its core, in the next decade, web services are going to be everywhere. Um, they're going to live in more places than just your browser. And uh, they'll reason about a lot of intimate details about our personal lives. And what Alio is seeking to do here is to build a user experience um, on the web that is both truly personal and truly private. Um, the idea is to not have to compromise um, and, and to provide web services and users a far more incentive aligned um, uh, platform to effectively build private applications on. Uh, you know, what is the difference between what Alio is doing and other privacy focused blockchains like Monero and Zcash? Yeah, so at its core, there's really, there's really two verticals to evaluate blockchains on. There's programmability and there's privacy. Bitcoin, as we know, is very low on both. Um, it offers pseudo anonymity and it's primarily f uh, focused around money. Um, you know, Ethereum went one direction to offer uh, high programmability, um, but still offered low privacy. Um, you see blockchains like Zcash, which go the other direction to offer high privacy, but low programmability. And there's this upper right hand quadrant of high programmability and high privacy um, that effectively Alio achieves. And so, you know, the difference here really um, between things like Monero and Zcash and Alio is the difference of private money and private applications. So we know that regulators generally don't like private things. Uh, are there any regulatory tensions with developing this technology? It's a great question. Um, at its core, actually doubling down on, on, this, on this concept between private money and private applications, you know, we see right now with, with, private, with private money, there is a lot of regulations that are coming up with respect to KYC and AML. You see that um, you know, FATF and, uh, and these different uh, organizations globally are starting to look uh, and take a, take a much closer look at that. Um, you know, on the other hand, I'd say with private applications, um, it's almost going the opposite direction, that um, you see things like GDPR, CCPA, at least in California, where there's far more laws around data privacy, um, application states, and, and what can be reasoned about by different parties. Um, certainly in specific regulated industry, industries, whether it be banking or, or say healthcare, there is even further um, compliance needs on that front. And so I'd say that in this case with private applications, it almost opens a door um, that allows you to take this type of technology and make it far more practical for, for real world applications. So, Howard, what sort of safeguards are you putting in place to monitor, say, bad actors, or are there none? No, it's a, it's a, that's also a very important part of the system. So one of the things that we've built into the core of Alio is specifically view keys. And, and in this case, you know, for regulators, those are effectively audit keys that um, not only can we um, see on a transaction level every individual record, um, you can individually disclose the details of those transactions, but um, on an account level that you can also provide that same level of, of visibility. And so, um, you know, it, if you're an onboard or offboard uh, mechanism, say you're, you're a VASP or, or you're an exchange, um, it's very clear that um, if you have possession of the private key, um, it will allow you to also derive that view key and see um, the entire account history in that particular, um, in that particular instance. Um, on the other side of things, one of the things that I think is very powerful about this mechanism and specifically about zero knowledge proofs is that we can actually enforce better compliance um, about an application than the status quo today. Today, if you look at applications, you know, say, say an exchange, you know, most of the actual enforcement for compliance is done post factum. It's done via audits. Um, what this technology actually allows you to do is to enforce the correctness of your of your application at the time of use. And so you can enforce before a trade executes that both parties, for example, have satisfied KYC requirements and that at the time of that swap, that indeed that this is a legitimate exchange that's happening. And so that's something that, that the cryptography can actually not only confirm is correct, but also prevent 
um, from actually executing if you don't satisfy those requirements. Everybody loves the idea of privacy in theory, but when it comes down to practice, a lot of people are very willing to sacrifice privacy for convenience, including in the crypto world. Have you really seen evidence that people really care enough about privacy to, to use these kind of platforms? I think on a on a day to day level, you know, if it's not convenient, um, people tend not to use it. And I think that as as the stakes get bigger, especially as as the size and the value of cryptocurrencies continues to go up, this will become more and more relevant. We're already seeing at least with larger institutions um, who, you know, including many of our investors um, who are holding large, large amounts of, of you know, top 10 coins, for example, it's a very big deal to them. Um, when they want to move an asset, and even more so for for some of the smaller coins, uh, let's say the long tail of ERC twenties, um, this is also an issue because every time that they they move those into an exchange, it's very clear that they're they're likely going to take some action on it. And because of of the of the small market for those long tail coins, um, it's actually very easy to move those markets. And so as part of that, you know, there, there needs to be better protection mechanisms built in. Otherwise. Not only does this make a system susceptible to front running attacks, but also just arbitrage attacks. And we're seeing that now actually on Ethereum, that this is a, a prevalent case, not only by miners, but also just by traders themselves. Yeah, privacy is certainly a hot trend. Thank you so much, Howard, for joining us this morning and talking a bit about your new project. Thank you. And thank you for having me on.